Here I've got a nice number theory problem that comes from the 2012 European Girls Math Olympiad. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We want to suppose that P and Q are primes. Notice they're not necessarily distinct primes, but they're both primes satisfying the following equation. So we've got P over P plus one plus Q plus one over Q equals 2n over n plus 2, and that's true for some natural number n. And our goal is to find all possible values of q minus p. And I think there's a really nice result that comes from this problem, and it allows us to look at a very famous conjecture in mathematics. Okay, so let's get to the solution. So we'll start off by doing a little bit of simplification of these three terms to make them look a little bit nicer. So, or maybe nicer isn't the right word, but just a little bit easier to work with for our purposes. So we can take P over P plus one and write it as P plus one minus one over P plus one. Obviously we just added and subtracted one, but that is equal to one minus one over P plus one. Great, now we can do something similar to this Q plus one, but it's even easier here. We've got Q plus one over Q. Well, that's gonna be equal to Q over Q plus one over Q. That's equal to one plus one divided by Q. Okay, now let's do something similar to this guy right here. Notice we've got something that's linear in N in the numerator and the denominator we can take this 2n over n plus 2 and rewrite it as 2 times n plus 2 minus 4 over n plus 2. So it may not look like we left the numerator alone, but we did because notice we have added 4 as 2 plus 2 and we have also subtracted 4. So now, canceling some stuff out, we see that this is equal to two minus four over n plus two. Okay, nice. But now remember that built into all of this is this term plus this term equals this term. That's just rewriting our equation here vertically. But via this simplification, we now see that this that is bracketed in orange plus this next thing, which is also bracketed in orange, is equal to this last thing, which I've bracketed in orange. But I can actually simplify that quite a bit. Well, maybe not quite a bit, but at least a little bit. Notice that I've got one plus one on the top of this equation and two on the bottom of this equation. So those can be used to simplify or to cancel each other out. So we've got two and the one and the one cancel. And now let's rewrite our equation. So we've got minus one over P plus one plus one over Q equals minus four over N plus two. So we probably like to change the signs here so I don't have a leading minus sign. Well, that's easy to do. I can just erase this minus sign, erase this minus sign, and change this plus to a minus. Next up, I'll put these two quantities together by finding a common denominator. Notice that my common denominator will be P plus one times Q. So let's multiply this by Q, and then we'll multiply this by P plus one, but that means we need to do that in both the numerator and the denominator. So that's gonna leave us with Q minus P minus one over Q times P plus one equals four over N plus two. But given the fact that n is a natural number, that was one of our assumptions, is that this equation exists for some natural number n, we see that this right-hand side of our equation is strictly bigger than zero, so it's positive. That means the left-hand side of the equation is also bigger than zero. Well, the denominator is bigger than zero, obviously. That means the numerator is bigger than zero. But the numerator being bigger than zero, in other words, Q minus P minus one bigger than zero tells us that Q is bigger than P plus one. If you recall at the very beginning, 
we mused that there was a possibility here that P and Q were the same prime because there's nothing about distinctness written into this problem. But after this calculation, we see that in fact, P and Q are distinct primes. Okay, so before we move on to the next step, which will be on the next chalkboard, I'm gonna take this equation here and use multiplication to rewrite it as an equation of integers or natural numbers instead of an equation of rational numbers. And I can do that just by doing a simple cross multiplication. So notice we also see that Q minus P minus one times N plus two will be equal to four times Q times P plus one. So these two facts will help us work towards the end. Where are we so far? So we've seen that Q is bigger than P plus one and that Q minus P minus one times N plus two is equal to four Q times P plus one. Now we've deposited ourselves with an equation over the natural numbers that includes products on both sides. And that should be a big hint that we probably wanna find some GCDs, some greatest common divisors, of some of the component parts of each side of this equation. And probably along the way, we'll use the fact that P and Q are primes. Okay, so let's do that. We'll start by finding the GCD of Q with Q minus P minus one. So let's see. GCD of Q with Q minus P minus one. Well, maybe the first thing that we might, we might wanna do is multiply everything here by a minus one, just so that it looks a little bit nicer. So that's gonna be equal to the GCD of Q with P plus one minus Q. Okay. Then next, because Q is a multiple of Q, we can add Q to this entry in the GCD and we do not change its value. Well, that's because we've got Q over here. Okay, so that's gonna give us, this is equal to the GCD of Q with P plus one. We haven't used anything about the primeness of P or Q yet, but we're about to. So since Q is a prime, its only divisors are one and itself. So we know that this is equal to one or Q. And now we wanna argue that it is impossible for this to be Q. So let's do that by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that this GCD, so that's of Q and P plus one equals Q. But let's see, that means Q divides Q, which is no problem. And it means that Q divides P plus one. That's part of the definition of being a greatest common divisor. You are a common divisor. But we can take this and recall that a divisibility condition like this gives us a certain ordering on these numbers. This implies that Q is less than or equal to P plus one. Q being less than or equal to P plus one is impossible because we already showed that Q is bigger than P plus one. So we've reached a contradiction here, but we were trying to reach a contradiction, so that's okay. So that means this GCD is in fact equal to one. So I'll just erase the possibility of this GCD being equal to Q and we'll move on to the next step. We just got done doing a little bit of a calculation to show that the GCD of Q and Q minus P minus one was one. And through a very, very similar method, you can show that the GCD of P plus one and Q minus P minus one is also one. So if you don't see that immediately from what we did up here, I would urge you to follow the same steps as before, and that would be a nice little homework exercise. But now let's look at our equation. We've got Q minus P minus one times N plus two is equal to four Q times P plus one. But we know that Q and P plus one are both relatively prime to Q minus P minus one. 
That means that this n plus two term must be a multiple of this q times p plus one. So in other words, these two facts here involving the GCD, along with our equation that we calculated before, tells us that q times p plus one must divide n plus two. But that means that we can take n plus two and rewrite it as q times p plus one times, let's say x, for some natural number x. Now let's insert that here. So we've got this is equal to q times p plus one times x. But now we can eliminate some terms from both sides of this equation. So we can eliminate this p plus one and this p plus one, this q and this q. And that's going to leave us with q minus p minus one times x equals four. In other words, we see that q minus p minus one divides four or is a factor of four. But there are only three factors of four given that four is a perfect square of a prime. There's one, two, and four. But that tells us that q minus p minus 1 comes from the set of divisors of 4, 1, 2, and 4. And then we can add 1 to this side and add 1 to every element of that set. And we see that q minus p comes from the set, let's see, 2, 3, and 5. But let's look at this. If q minus p is equal to five or three, that means q and p have opposite parities. In other words, one of them is even and one of them is odd. But luckily there's only one even prime. So that actually collapses those cases down pretty quickly. So let's write that down. So if q minus p equals three, that tells us that p must be equal to two. And then q must in turn be equal to five. And then of course you would wanna plug this back into this equation and make sure everything works out. But we'll end up checking that on the next board. Okay, now similarly, if q minus p equals five, then that means that p is equal to two and q is equal to seven. And then similarly, you'd have to plug that up here and make sure a natural number exists. But again, such a natural number will exist. And I'll let you guys check that one on your own. Finally, we have the last case when Q minus P is equal to two. But if Q minus P equals two, there's a lot of choices. In fact, if the twin prime conjecture is true, then there are infinitely many possibilities here. Okay, so let's see what remains to do. We need to check that this thing here, which is circled, satisfies our equation. I'll leave it as a homework to check that this satisfies this equation. And then we need to argue something with this case when q minus p equals two. Okay, let's get to it. So in the last board, we determined the following values of p and q were possibilities. So p is two, q is five, p is two, q is seven, p is p, and q is p plus two. Now look, our goal down here is just to find all values of q minus p, not to find the individual primes. But we're gonna end up finding all the individual primes. Well, maybe not in this case, because it's unknown if there are infinitely many primes of that form or not. Okay, so what's left to do is check that primes that are boxed like this satisfy this equation. So I'll do this one. This one will be like a homework exercise to do. And then we'll talk about this last one as well. Okay, so let's start with this. So that means we've got the equation 2n over n plus 2 is equal to, well, let's see, it's going to be 2 over 3 plus 6 over 5. But adding that together, we get 28 over 15. That's just some simple arithmetic. So from here, maybe we could like divide this two out to turn this 28 into a 14, and we'll end up with 15n is equal to 14n plus 28. 
Now moving things around, we see that n is equal to 28. So in other words, in this case, we do have a value of n that satisfies this. So the value of q minus p of five minus two or three is indeed a possible value. So I'll put a check mark next to that. And then I'll put a check mark next to this, just work that out if you need to. Now, for this last case, there are actually two ways to finish this off. Well, a lot of different ways, but I'm gonna outline two different ways. You could pick maybe your favorite twin primes, three and five or five and seven, so on and so forth, and solve an equation that's similar to this to figure out what the corresponding n value would be. Since all we wanna look for is the difference in the primes, that would be enough. But I actually wanna check that this kind of equation gets satisfied for a certain value of n for all twin primes. Okay, so let's do that. So I'll bring this down here, and that will give us the following equation. We have p over p plus one, plus q plus one, that's p plus three, over q, that's p plus two. We have that is equal to two n over n plus two. So through some fairly straightforward symbolic arithmetic, we can take this left-hand side and reduce it to two p squared plus six p plus three over p squared plus three p plus two. So we have this rational expression in p is equal to this rational expression in n. Now we'd probably like to cross multiply the two sides of this equation that we've just formed exhibited by the blue equal sign and then solve for n. I'll let you guys work out all of the rest of the details, but what you end up with is n takes the value of four times p squared plus 12p plus six, and that's obviously a natural number for any prime p. So in other words, we haven't just shown that it's possible to achieve the value of q minus p equals two, but it's also possible to achieve it with any pair of twin primes. Which of course, the infinitude of such primes is still unknown. And that's a good place to stop.